for more reference this is a series of lectures for two of these analytical chemistry and uh, here we are going to learn about the practical environment to a basic physical chemistry today now here we are going to determine uh, photochromatic determination of riboflavin that means riboflavin can be determined photochromatic method with the help of calibration curve method or standard calibration curve method here is some theories associated with this uh, practical is given now here riboflavin is, uh, is also called as vitamin b2 now riboflavin is part of vitamin series of vitamins or family of vitamins riboflavin is one of the eight essential water soluble vitamins it is a naturally occurring substance present in green vegetables pulses milk eggs etc it is one of the important vitamins required for the proper growth and biochemical function in humans so riboflavin is essential for the growth for human vitamin b2 plays an important role in the conversion of energy for various body functions it is also essential for electron transport uh, chain that produces cellular cellular energy and in turn facilitates the processing of amino acids and fats it also acts as an antioxidant so riboflavin acts as an antioxidant vitamin b2 plays an important role in improving vision and treating disorders like keratosis and different types of eye conditions including cataracts eye fatigue and glaucoma so vitamin b2 is essential and useful for the um, eye health deficiency of riboflavin in the diet causes malfunctioning of abdominal glands leading to the conditions like anemia it also it can also lead to skin scaly skin rashes on male and female genitals rashes on the medial cleft of the upper lip uh, or smile lines connecting the nose and chin so these are okay so the information about the riboflavin its advantages and disadvantages through the corner of human health now here some part is a given riboflavin can also uh, analyzed by photochromatic method when riboflavin is expected to light it absorbs at 445 nanometer so 445 nanometer is the uh, primary filter for the riboflavin that is the absorption filter and another is emission filter or can say it emits a radiation of 450 nanometer the reason that so riboflavin can be determined in the visible region the intensity of emitted light is directly proportional to the concentration of riboflavin so i is directly proportional to c now here it is provided that uh, this uh, practically is useful for the low concentration of the riboflavin content but at higher concentration uh, of riboflavin determination it is not possible for the high concentration of riboflavin because at high, at high concentration there is a quenching of fluorescence takes place and this quenching of fluorescence interfere the analysis in the photophotometric method for the determination of an uh, can say riboflavin or vitamin b2 now these are we can say a uh, block diagram for the photophotometry is given light source is there primary filter is there sample solution is placed at 90 degree now here secondary filter is given here this is primary filter and this is secondary filter now uh, light is passed through, through the primary filter and uh, it is uh, inserted on the uh, the light is inserted on the sample solution the sample solution is again uh, there is one dark tube placed at the one side and at the other side there is a detector is placed now here uh, we we are uh, we are focusing at the radiation into into the secondary detector and the secondary detector, detector uh, from the uh, light coming from the secondary detector or okay, the secondary filter not a detector secondary filter uh, the radiations are detected through towards the detector and this detector is nothing but the one one type of okay, say, detection system for the intensity of radiations and uh, for again and this uh, through the uh, through the light you can say passing from the detector uh, it is detected by the amplification system and the readout control system now what is the aim of the video it is now it is given now here aim of the practical that, that is the analysis of riboflavin from vitamin supplementary capsule or sample by photofluorometric method 
and chemicals involved is that riboflavin AR grid acetic acid and distilled water so distilled water and acetic acid are useful for the dissolution purpose for the uh, okay, the sample solution and standard solution now apparatus photofluorometer volumetric flask 50 ml hard glass test tube 2 ml graduated pipette and micro grid is given for the apparatus now procedure here we prepare a stock solution of 50 ppm for the preparation of 50 ppm uh, we use the solvent 1% acetic acid and again this 50 ppm solution that can be directly prepared with the 50 mg of riboflavin by taking in uh, 1000 ml of acetic acid in distilled water and protect all solution from light this is the first point now next one from the stock solution prepare standard 2 4 6 8 10 ppm and prepare all solutions in 1 1% acetic acid now the sample now prepare samples uh, we can say 1 to 1.2 and 1.7 ml diluted to 25 ml with 1% acetic acid so how the sample solution and standard solutions are prepared by n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 ratio that is given in the next page use 1% acetic acid as a blank so blank is nothing but the 1% acetic acid that is a solvent put power of uh, power of equivalent on uh, equipment on and place primary filter and secondary filter for the analysis of riboflavin according to manufacturer instructions allow bulb to warm so that the constant intensity is achieved now place the blank solution press shutter and adjust fluorescence intensity zero now practically we perform this calibration remove blank solution and place standard 10 ppm select, select appropriate sensitivity but usually select medium sensitivity press shutter uh, and uh, and adjust intensity to definite value such as a 50 by calibration now now determine the fluorescence intensity of all standard and sample solution by calibration curve method determine the concentration of sample so this is all about the procedure involved in uh, practical Now here 0.5 ml is taken from the 50 ppm concentration and it is diluted to further 25 ml so that we get the 1 ppm concentration. Similarly 1 ml that should be diluted to 25 ml so that we get the 2 ppm concentration. So here again 1.5 ml is diluted to 25 ml then there we get the 3 ppm concentration. Again 2 ml is diluted to 25 ml so that we get the 4 ppm concentration. Again 2.5 ml is diluted to 25 ml so that we get the 5 ppm concentration. And similarly we prepare unknown concentration for the uh, 50 ppm concentration from the 50 ppm concentration and diluted to further 25 ml volumetric flask. And the, the intensity or okay, so the concentration varies from 2.4 and 3.4 ppm. And again this is a blank. And again a 1% acetic acid that should be added to 25 ml so that we get the uh, intensity of further intensity by instrumentation now this is a plot of graph now this graph is indicates the percentage of fluorescence intensity and concentration ppm so whatever the results we obtain from the instrument we write on x-axis while uh, the ppm concentration is right on the y-axis on the graph and we prepare a calibration curve over here again from the you can say uh, from the unknown uh, intensity of uh, fluorescence we determine the concentration of unknown sample uh, to the uh, by intersecting to x axis so this is all about the procedure and the finally we write the result table now here now here how to prepare solutions uh, we can say 1.2 ml that should be diluted to uh, 1.2 ml is taken from the 50 ppm concentration and diluted to 25 ppm so that we get the 2.4 ppm concentration again 1.7 ml that should be diluted to 50 ppm concentration uh, that's a uh, 1.7 ml of uh, riboflavin that will be uh, taken from 50 ppm concentration and diluted to 25 uh, 25 ml uh, volumetric plus so that we get the 3.4 ppm concentration and similarly here uh, from 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, that should be obtained in ml quantity, 0.5 ml, 1 ml, 1.5 ml, 2 ml and 2.5 ml, that should be diluted to, that should be up, uh, taken from the uh, stock solution, that is a 50 ml, 50 ppm capacity and that should be diluted, diluted to 25 uh, ml volumetric flask, so that we get the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, standard solutions or non concentration in ppm solution <coughs> now 
Now here we have prepared observation table. Here solution number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and 6 is nothing but the unknown concentration. Now here uh, one uh, uh, solution number 1 contains 0.5 ml, solution number 2 contains 1, uh, solution 3 contains 1.5 ml and solution 4 number uh, 4 contains the 2 ml, solution 5 contains the 2.5 ml of riboflavin uh, taken from the 50 ppm concentration and uh, here uh, these, these solutions are diluted to further 25 ml co uh, concentration to give the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ppm concentrations and finally we prepare a unknown concentration and measure by uh, okay, instrumentation we get the results here results are obtained from the uh, photofluorometer uh, first 7, next to 9, 11, 14, 17 and unknown concentration have the fluorescence intensity that is 12.8 and here we prepare a result now here result how it result is obtained that that we are going to now learn now here calibration curve is plotted here and uh, on the x-axis there is a concentration ppm, on the y-axis there is a percentage fluorescence intensity ranging from 2 to 18 because we will get the results in between this uh, and uh, we prepare a concentration already from the uh, N1 V1 is equal to N2 to ratio and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ppm. So these are the can say the concentrations are obtained here and we plot a uh, calibration curve or can say standard calibration curve graph here. Uh, and uh, we get the uh, vicinity points and from these vicinity points we uh, plot a line uh, intersecting to through the origin here here is the one point here uh, we we have the we have the 12.8 reading 12.8 is uh, reading is obtained from uh, we can say uh, by uh, instrumentation and uh, we just uh, intersect uh, that 12.8 value to the y axis because this value is belonging to the percentage fluorescence intensity and uh, just uh, when we draw the intersect towards the y axis similarly at the same time we draw the intersecting line towards the x axis so that we get the unknown concentration in ppm so this unknown concentration in ppm that can be calculated with the help of calibration curve method so the obtained value is 3.5 ppm so 3.5 ppm is nothing but it is, it is it is obtained from the graphical method or you can say it is obtained from the graph 3.5 ppm but calculated value is 3.4 ppm because when 1.7 uh, we can say uh, we take the 1.7 unknown ml and that should be diluted to 25 ml uh, 25 ml volumetric plus that means 1.7 into 50 divided by 20 that is nothing but 3.4 but 3.4 is a calculated value and 3.5 ppm is the we can say this is the value that is obtained from the uh, that is the value obtained from the graphical method uh, or can say standard calibration curve method uh, so that we just uh, uh, um, uh, put forward that the, we obtain these two values nearly approximately same because 3.4 and 3.5 it is nothing but there is one difference 0.1 uh, ppm difference is only so we get the concurrent results uh, in this method uh, that is a uh, determination of spectro for, uh, de determination of riboflavin concentration, uh, unknown concentration of riboflavin by photofluorometric method. So this is all about this can say uh, the theory, principle, uh, procedure, observation, observation table, graph, and calculations involved in the practical. With this content, I conclude this lecture. Thank you very much for your patience listening. Any comments, so you can say, uh, any question belonging to this practical, uh, any problem belonging to this uh, 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 this uh, practical will be acknowledged and uh, will be, uh, I will uh, try to uh, my level best to give the answer for that problem. Thank you very much for your patience listening.